Hi, I'm DJ, and in this video, I'd like to focus on something I find interesting and maybe useful or dangerous. What I'm talking about is information theory applied to betting. It's called the Kelly Criterion. To understand it, we need to play a game. You start with $50 and will flip an imbalanced coin repeatedly. The coin has a 70% chance of lending heads and a 30% chance of tails. On each flip, you are given a four to six payout odds, heads to tails, and a choice of how much to wager. That means if you wager $6, then you'll profit $4 if it comes up heads. Otherwise, you'll lose $6. If you were to wager only $3, these profits and losses would get cut in half. Now, the first question is, should you even flip this coin once? It turns out, yes, since you expect to make some money on a single flip. If you were to wager $6, for example, there is a 70% chance you'll make $4 and a 30% chance you'll lose your wager of six. That averages out to a $1 profit. So let's say you get 100 flips. How would you play this game? How would you size your wager as you flip and your wealth changes? Well, whatever your strategy is, we can picture it like this. The horizontal axis tells us which flip we're on and the vertical axis tells us our wealth after each flip. Okay, now let's try a strategy. Let's say we'll wager $5 on each flip, no matter what. Well, one play of our game might look like this. Okay, not bad, we made some money. But things could have turned out differently. Maybe like this, or like this, or like this. Clearly, a huge number of these are possible. Now, ultimately, we'd like to pick the best strategy. So we need a way to summarize these paths and their probabilities into a single number so we can compare strategies with that number. Well, there are a variety of ways we could do that. We could look at the average final wealth or the risk adjusted final wealth, or as economists would like, pass our final wealth into some utility function and then use the average utility. But for the Kelly criterion, there is a specific metric in mind. That is, for each possible final wealth, we ask what growth rate does it imply? As an example, Let's say one possible final wealth is $150. Then we ask the question, if our wealth grew by the same percent on each flip, what would that percent be that yields $150 after 100 flips? Well, we can answer that by using this equation, which we can invert to give us the growth rate. It turns out this tells us the growth rate is about 1.1% per flip. Now, a particular strategy, like our bet five always strategy, gives us a range of growth rates in the end, each with their own probability of being realized. We can plot those growth rates along this horizontal axis, along with their simulated probabilities according to this strategy. Finally, the Kelly criterion demands we evaluate a strategy by the average growth rate. For the bet five always strategy, the average growth rate is roughly half a percent which gets you to about 80-ish dollars from $50. Not bad, but it begs the question, what strategy should we use such that the expected growth rate is highest? For example, we could change our constant dollar wager to a few different values, and that would change our average growth rate. So out of all possible strategies, including those beyond just using a fixed dollar amount on each wager, what's the best we can do? Well, before I reveal that, you should know that most people do terribly in this game. There's an interesting study where they actually ran games very similar to this and found that most people horribly underperform the optimal strategy. 28% of participants lost all their money. That would virtually never happen with the Kelly Criterion. In fact, if everyone followed the optimal strategy, 94% of them would have 10 x their money. In the study, only 21% reached that level. Ouch. And this happened because our instincts mislead us. For example, if people saw a string of one outcome, they were more likely to bet big on the next flip. So just for fun, let's try that. Let's say you'll bet $5 each round, but if you see three tails in a row, you'll bet $50. Well, that would give you this. Oh, not good. You go bust quite a bit. Okay, so what's the best possible strategy? Well, for that, we need John Kelly from Bell Labs, who was working with the father of information theory, Claude Shannon. Kelly, 
someone who smoked six packs of cigarettes a day and died by the age of 41 really understood risk and gave us the solution. First, he told us that the best strategy out of all possible strategies involves betting a fixed percent of your current wealth. Second, that fixed percent is given by this equation. It's a function of only two things, the probability of heads and B, which represents your odds. Basically, if your payout odds are quoted as X to Y for heads to tails, B is X over Y. So in our case, it's four over six or two thirds. To understand this, let's consider a plot. Along the horizontal axis, we have the percent of our current wealth that will wager on every flip. Kelly already told us that the best strategy can be found somewhere on this line. Now we can plot the expected growth rate for each percent. What Kelly tells us is the maximum for this function. So this is the best we can do. We use a constant percent wager and we have a formula for what that percent is. So let's see how this strategy does. But first, because it's such a killer strategy, we actually need to plot our wealth on a log scale. Okay, so Kelly gives us results like this. Not bad at all. Our expected growth rate is nearly two and a quarter percent on each flip. A growth rate like that would give you a final wealth around $450 after 100 flips. Excellent. And one thing I noticed when doing these simulations is on a log scale, these trajectories look a lot like the constant dollar trajectories we saw earlier. This tells me the advantage of betting a constant percent of your wealth every time is you travel evenly through log space. I guess that's good for growth. Now, I could play with this for a while, but I know you guys like code. So in the description, I'll link to a notebook which will allow you to play with the parameters of this game. The number of flips, the probability of heads, your payout odds, and your betting strategy. Then you'll get everything you see here. If that's how you like to learn, go for it. But now I need to do the responsible thing and tell you that this equation, as is, almost never applies in the real world. When you're considering betting in reality, you almost never know the true probabilities of whatever outcome is in front of you. At best, you have an estimate. And if you plug in that estimate as the true probability for this equation, you'll run into trouble. Here's a realistic example. Let's say you don't have the true probability of heads, but you'll estimate it. So for the first 10 flips, you won't bet anything. You'll just collect data. But after the 10th flip, you'll use the flips you saw to estimate the true probability. Then you'll plug that into the Kelly formula to determine your wager. Seems like something we do in reality, right? Well, in that case, we get these outcomes. Ugh. Our average growth rate has fallen to around three quarters of a percent, which would yield a wealth of about $100. When we had the correct probabilities, it was about four and a half times that. And just think about our strategy. We are using a fixed percent of our wealth, as Kelly suggested, and we're using his formula and a reasonable estimate of the true probability of heads. This is exactly the type of approximation we'd be tempted to use in real life. And yet, our results are obliterated. The problem is, uncertainty in your estimate should make you less confident in your bets. So, you should shrink them. But by how much? I don't know. Risk management is hard as hell and the answers aren't short. But despite all this uncertainty, there is one thing I can say for sure. We're all definitely gonna die. Excuse me, I mean, thank you for your focus.